Um, name is Barbara Walker. I live in Birmingham and work in Birmingham. Boundary One was um, was a a work that was came out of a, a a body of work that I was producing while I was a student um, in the the nineties uh, um, um, in my BA years, um, and the idea was was looking at the time at. I think I was very much inf inspired by a social documentary at the time. Um, at the time I was looking at a lot of photographers who was working. Um, at the time there was a lot of proliferation of photography within a lot of artists and um, that interests me and I was very much wanting to engage in those, those series and those artists' works that was um, current. Um, at the time, I was looking a lot at um, Henry Carter Bresson, um, Dorothy Nalang, Lang, also Emmett Francis, Van Lieberg. So it was um, there was a lot of flux of artists within the art history that I was looking at. That was working within photography, but looking at you know documentary and documenting. Um, um, a situation, a community, society. Um, fascinated by that. Um, and I wanted to add to that debate, to that conversation. For me also, the, 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 the thrust of doing this project was, through my research, I found that what materials out there that documented a community, looking at the Afro-Caribbean community in, in, in terms of this work, was what I, what I came across were a lot of images that was, I guess, through posters or photography, but not enough access through uh, painting. Um, I guess I, 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 I was concerned that there's more to the, this group than what exists at the time, like the Bob Marley posters or the, the Lion of Judah or the Shabaranks. So I guess I think I, I, I wanted to add to that and add, that, uh, add a, a new language to that conversation. So I think that my approach was to start at home. So this work is specific to Birmingham, specific to home, looking at Afro-Caribbean people within Birmingham, mainly Handsworth. Um, so I guess it, my approach was, um, the perspective was taken from a member of the community who lived, who worked, and it was coming from someone who was part of that community, um, other than someone looking from outside looking in. It was um, my perspective, um, um, looking at, you know, various groups, individuals, work, play, um, and I wanted to create something very sophisticated, ambitious, bold, and, and, and kind of link it to mainstream. So these work, I guess, is kind of inter interrogating what existed and, and also presenting another voice. Um, so from this project, the, the outcome of it was um, 20, 24 pieces of work was, was created over a two year period from 2000 to 2002. Boundary two is one of my favorite. This one was um, depiction from a barber shop in Handsworth, so Road. I mean, the, the initial start, I started off with portraiture, um, family members that was close to me. That was easy, um, such IDs, IGs such as my children, because it was accessible. And also get into the habit, it was new to me. Also, um, the concept was still being, still working through the, the ideas and, and the approach and also using 
painting and drawing as a communication tool, but still trying to work out how I was going to present these work. So I initially wanted to record. Um, so I, with the use of a camera, I went out from the, um, creating the individual pieces, then wanted to look at group compositions. One of my favourite um, um, pieces going into the barber shops. Um, I found that very quite challenging. <laughs> uh, um, challenging, um, difficult at times because I didn't just go to one um, barber shop. I went to various barber shop. Um, develop a company because you were a woman, or challenging? I think it's um because I think it's also in the male spaces. it's um, on many levels it to be, um I mean I usually work in isolation I usually in my studio now I found I was going out into the community having a conversation trying to convince try to um gain some trust uh, um, with these individuals and also allowing them me allowing me to go into their space and use them for whatever outcomes. So this particular piece was done over two days. First one, the approach was once I have, I um, identify the, the group, I approached them through conversation, um, a dialogue was developed and then I was allowed to take photographs. From that photographs, those several photographs, 40 or 50 photographs, I would select two and then I start, then the works begin. So it's, my work involves not just being in my studio, at that point it started to emerge whereby I was going out having conversation and trying to, I guess, get a sense of capture that moment through painting. The work also critically look at painting. Um, looking at group compositions, also um, looking at language of painting, and it was the first time that I had worked with, with oils. Um, and looking at the black figure, um, for me it was important to illustrate the black um, figure um, because I think within the art world, that palette isn't as yet being saturated by the art, work, art world. So I guess I, <laughs> I'm always pushing um, my boundaries, my interests, and giving a particular interpretation to the work. Not necessarily painting, I think within drawing like Charles White, I looked a lot at Charles White um, at the time. Um, um, there's a lot of um, American artists I was looking at the time, as well as you know, British artists, but basically looking in terms of the spectrum of art and design that kind of make reference to my interests. So I think it's, I was looking a lot of photography at the time uh, within paintings, um, looking at European painters, you're looking at Corbett, Hogarth, the, those tropes, they run within the work. The Impressionist, you know, in terms of, I guess with this, it's, it's, it lends itself to photography. And I do think photography and painting, there is the same relationship in terms we, we take, we're trying to create and document a world, a particular world through, through a sense of medium. But, um, I didn't necessarily want to use photography, I wanted to use paint. I think with paint and paint and drawing, I think the difference within paint, um, the difference between paint and drawing, trying to produce this within a, within a photography, with, with painting, you get that mark. That mark is me. Within photography, you may not get a sense of that. You know, you get those marks and that is me. So I'm in the work, you know. You, historically, um, I'm documenting myself. I'm leaving me. I'm there, very much so. And I don't know if you can get that through photography.
So a lot of the time, the work is about me. Um, if I'm not in there, it's, there's a, a sense of me in the work. I think at this point, um, well, I think you'll have to go back to the other pieces. These, this was the later work where the, the beginning of the this other series of full colour, very bold, very bright, very warm colour, you know, and it's quite luring. Um, but I think with this is where I was experimenting and pushing the boundaries and it kind of it's symbolic to nostalgia and making it more uh, on the border of monochromatic, but not monochromatic, but kind of taking away the colour, taking away the full colour and making it more graphic. And I wanted to create something, a mood or um, um, let's create nostalgia and and I thought this was the best way to illustrate that. But it's a more of experimental piece. But also looking at the composition, the, it's quite intense. It's quite um, packed full, um, and it's meant to. It's meant to be. What's the, what's interesting about this work? It's a snapshot in t snapshot in time, and apparently, it's recording several members of the community. Because now, through my going back to that space, because that space still exists, this person is no longer with us. He's passed away. The person in the background, he's now the owner of that establishment. Um, so it's, you know, it's creating those social histories and the existence or recording. And, and uh, I think I, I really like that. I don't think I was that critical, conscious, I mean, about the scale. I think I wanted, to, I knew I wanted to paint and I wanted to paint large. I think at the time when I was doing that, it may sound, there may be a bit of con um, contradiction, but I think at the beginning, I was the audience and that was enough. Um, but as the work, as the work, the work, the work materialised and developed, then I started to look at the audience. And it's about, and I guess the size is about presence, it's about representation, it's about power. These are main for mainstream spaces, but also I've exhibited them in unconventional spaces like tower blocks and um, <laughs> um, you know, old houses, um, community centres, you name it. So I guess it has I think I like the idea that anyone can engage with this work to have or have access to the work. So I think in terms of the audience, it's, it's you start to address that for me. It came later. Well, um, I, I still have to go back to this work. This work, um, after I created it, um, and it was then out in the public domain, I. There was a point in 2003 where I started to critically question and I took time out, I think about two years out of my practice. It was necessary, um, you know, critically to think about what you're trying to say about, you. Uh, still trying to define, I think, defining my practice and, and to reflect. And reflection is good. I think reflection is very good. And, so I, I moved away from my practice, even though not necessarily totally move away, but in terms of creating. But although I wasn't creating work, I was critically, critically thinking about work. And during that period of not um, producing, making, immersing myself with my work physically, um, something happened one evening whereby I remember it really well, um, still, still fresh in my mind, um, clear as if it was yesterday that when my son came in and um, Solomon, then 17, Solomon is my youngest child. Um, he was, he's 20, 29 now. Um, and he came in and he said, um, Mom, I've been stopped and I've been stopped again. And that was 2002. And 
I began to question him and he, through that whole conversation, he handed me these crumpled, one crumpled bucket. And then later it revealed that he had several crumpled buckets. Um, <laughs> and, and it was funny because um, I was immediately felt really confused and puzzled and very ambivalent in terms of what I was dealing with. Um, it's funny, at first I thought, wow, you know, very angry and upset, but at the same time, <laughs> it's funny, um, very intrigued by these yellow pieces of paper, carbon paper. From then, I, 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 I collected them, I kept them. That was in 2002. I put them in a, 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 kit, a vase in my kitchen and they were there until 2005. So basically, a lot of my ideas and work can come out of conversation, media, songs, whatever. I, I'm a scavenger of information I, um, and a lot of my work is about situation or people or things that are happening around me. I guess my work is about a window to my world or giving an interpretation or perspective to the world or how I see it and where I position myself. So going back to this work, had the dockets from 2002, but it's not until 2005 where I connected with the work again and realized this is when I wanted to work again. And then you see, and now you see a shift with then and now. Now the work has a, a very critical visual language. This work serves its purpose. It gave me certain skills and understanding and about the work. Um, but now I think I was developing a more critical visual language within my work. And, and also a shift in terms of materials. And I wanted to immerse to play a bit more with this work. So the small, with the dockets, I started to work with the idea of making them more accessible because they're about A5. And so I worked with the designer to scan with the need to experiment to, um, to create a sense of um, sensation, um, to learn about what I was dealing with. Um, and I need to explain, um, when I'm working, I, I, I do regard myself as very much a research-based um, practitioner. Before I even start work, I have to immerse myself within research. So I work with archive, I, 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 um, literature, um, and conversations, the media, Facebook, and whatever just to dig around to find information to support the work, to kind of test my hypothesis, I guess. Um, so I spent about um, a year to six months, I think, on this work. I worked with the West Midlands Police, um, had access to their database. Um, also, the, the research involved me talking to the members of the community, mainly mothers, um, about someone that had experienced um, the same situation, um, gathering data, at one point stalking the police, <laughs> which was fun. Um, so again, it's taking me out of my studio. I'm not just in the studio within these four walls. Um, I'm actively working on different planes to gather as much information and um, sources to uh, construct this piece's um, body of work. What came out of the, the, the work was 36 pieces of work, body of work, um, all on this scale or slightly bigger. Um, and it's one of my most profound and stimulating work to date. It's very personal. 
it's about It's also, it's looking at the impact that it's had on myself and, 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 my, and my son, Solomon. But the, the work is ideally about a mother's concern as well. Um, it's also, you know, looking at the perspective of an artist um, who is making commentary to these things. Um, and it responds a lot to today, what's happening. Um, within Birmingham, it's looking also historically and um, contemporary at policing today. So it's specific to time. Well, it's bringing awareness to a particular um, situation um, um, in terms of I mean, look, he's got West Midland Police <laughs> stamped all over it. And I find these quite provocative, you know, even like the text and these, these category of pace, drugs, firearms, but also using that as a backdrop to interrogate and um, uh, to have some understanding because this was new. You know what, I was going to say it was new to me, but it isn't because uh, this is just being played out again, like, you know, making reference to the SOS law of the 70s and 80s. And I was, I witnessed um, various members of the communities or friends that experience, went through those experiences. And I think what had surprised me and shocked me is that we've come back two decades, three decades later, and we're still dealing with it, and it hasn't changed. Then it, it never really personally affected me, but now it has. So it's, 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 I'm quite upset about it, and I'm a bit raw about it, and also the experience, the effect it had on my son, because he was really upset about it. And, but at the same time, um, it made us really aware of, you know, your laws, your rights, you know, looking a bit more of this, this legis legislation, the act. Um, but out of something that's happened so personal, so... Um, critical, I presented something that's beautiful, I like to think. It's subtle, it's... it's, it's it's political with a, a, polit a, um, a small P, I think. It's, and it's how you present it. Um, it's, I would say it's, it's polemic and it's how I delivered it, but it's subtle. Um, because at the same time, I want audience to be, to be close to it. I think there's very much the personal in, about me in that work. It's very much about me. Um, even though I'm using different tropes or devices, it's very much about me, <laughs> you know. Um, here, it's quite pedestrian, I think. But still, here, it's almost like I was, hold, I was not holding back. But also, it's also showed, I guess, the progression from where I was then to now. Um, but it's also just pushing myself and, um, and I do think artists should challenge themselves. Um, here I'm looking at painting, the aesthetics of painting and drawings, but here it's almost like, yeah, I can have some skills, I can paint and draw, it's what you do with it. And it's a communication tool. It, it is, and I do think my work is a communication tool. I don't really necessarily can articulate it a lot of the time um, verbally, but through my work, I hope it resonates, it speaks um, on many levels. So it's a communication tool, and the reason why the whiting out, it's, it represents anger, it represents, it's a, a, a graphical tool whereby I wanted to remove that experience, that existence.
blood drawings um, came from Ladder and Words. It was a natural progression to to work with the concept in terms of looking at stereotyping and how we sometimes perceive people by the way they dress and there's a over there's always a, a bit of overarching with one project to the other so i think this work um, came about whereby i did a residency i applied for a residency in south africa um, uh, at the bag factory and the work started on small, with small drawings to begin with and I wanted to talk about residencies and what they offer for me. There's a time that I, I, I like the idea of going away and doing residencies. It gives me the opportunity for, to concentrate on my ideas, myself, time and space. Also, being in a different space can um, trigger new ideas, new conversation. And, and I do think artists should be able to move around and and just have different perspectives and um, and I think when I went to the bag factory um, I went with just a very open view anyway I started to select members of um, from the community to come into my studios and to photograph them but not just to photograph them, to have a dialogue and um, develop a conversation. So losing them as, I guess, objects, objects, subjects, looking at them um, in terms of what they wear and, but also asking various questions about clothing. Does clothing define you? Um, does your clothing say something about you? And this is totally subjective, you know. Um, so that was a start of the project from South Africa. So what I ended up with are very uh, um, small pieces, A2 pieces of work of charcoal drawings that came back to England, showcased briefly at, in Nottingham. And in 2011, I was approached by the New Art Gallery, New Art Gallery, Warsaw to be an artist in residency. And they were particularly keen to develop that project. Um, my first encounter with that space um, at Warsaw was quite frightening. I gotta be honest, I was frightened about it um, because it was really a, a typical white cube, um, quite intimidated. In terms of my studio, this is my studio, it's, it's dirty, it's cold, it's rough. Being in that new clean space was too clinical, too new, very overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the prospect of doing something in that space and I, didn't, and I really didn't necessarily feel comfortable to begin with about that space. Anyhow, um, I, I thought I was going to continue doing some drawings from a series, um, still selecting individuals. But what I found was I immediately responded to the space by drawing on the walls. And that was the first time I ever drew on the wall. And it came so natural to me. I knew to, I realised to own that space, to critically work within that space, also to um, engage with a new audience and to push myself. I knew that I had to, I guess, push myself. And, and how that came about was, um, I created the space, the work became a think tank. It became the studio, a place for conversation, to develop new dialogue. Um, um, I created little mini workshops with, so now I'm looking at audience. Um, and with that, um, 
members of the community, many viewers that came into the space through a dialogue, through photography again, photographed them, and then I created these large pieces of drawing. Working with the architecture of the space, which was really important. Although there wasn't, there wasn't um, a kind of, uh, my approach wasn't, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I didn't have a set idea of what I was going to produce. I think just being in that space, it naturally developed that way. I, I didn't conceive that I was going to be working on the wall. It just happened and I love that. I love that um, unexpected. I like the idea that it naturally flew like that and improvisation yeah it just it just happened it was the first time I worked on the wall and I was really surprised how easy it was I immediately realized I wanted to work large um, again it's about representation it's about power and it symbolized me well <laughs> uh, how can I talk about that work it's hard to talk about the work because the work is, um, I feel a lot of it, I can't express it, it's, it's hard, it's, it's quite specific because although th those are all members of the public and the, 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 the face is irrelevant, it's about what they wear and, and I want to take away their heads um, so that the audience can scrutinise their clothing and they are fit, they fit within um, portraiture. But in that lineup, it's, it, there's only two black men and three, the majority, the rest are white men, young white men um, that came into that space. And they came, it's people, that individual that came in that space. It's not that I went outside and plucked people from off the street or in the corridor, they came into that space. So they're coming to me, which is nice. <laughs> um, and however, and then you have these series of, these young men, and I like the idea that I'm, I'm taking these, the isolated, the lonely, the vulnerable, and bringing them into this space and giving them back the power. Um, but also, by me wiping away the work, the work represents, act as a device, as a reference to black men that I see that are constantly wiped away through society. But the smudges that are there leaves the traces, they still leave their traces within society. And, and, and that is, is a quite a critical thing that has to happen with that work, that constantly be removed society. And, I've, and that's how I, I interpret it. And I remove it. Um, and I always have to remove it. So I would spend three months um, detailing, drawing these. No, there's no um, cutting corners. I would draw these to the detail and then I know that they are removed. Um, the response to that is quite overwhelming in terms of when the audience knows that they're going to be removed. They, the way they behave is quite um, <laughs> interesting. Well, they immediately will say, well, can't you keep it? Shouldn't it be kept? All that work. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's really um, bizarre the way they, um, they behave. I mean, I already knew the work was going to, um, wasn't going to be there. Um, so um, I was happy for the work to go in that respect. And I think for me, it, that, that, that work is about um, my experience um, and it acts as a device to talk to the audience as well, to ge generate a conversation because you immediately go in that space and it brings, it starts a conversation. Um, because of the scale? Of the because of the scale. I mean, I don't work with any technicians, um, I, it's just me. I, the only thing that I, on a technician or support, is building the um, scaffolds. 
but I will move the scaffolds to and fro, positioning. I will, I draw, um, only I can see what I need to see, so I don't work with a team of people. And, but also I like to be in control. I'm a bit of a control freak. <laughs> Painting is a different language to drawing, you know. I mean, with painting, I mean, drawing, it's like, I'm getting excited about drawing. <laughs> I love drawing. I am, it's a draw, it, it's a medium that I guess I, I best, suits me to express myself. It's very forgiving. It's very flexible, you know. Um, with, with painting, it can be a bit static, you know. It, you know, you can move, you can play with it a bit, um, a lot, um, and it doesn't restrict me a lot. Um, but also, if you look at the drawing, there is a lot of detail, and that is deliberate to draw the audience in. I know it's going to go, I've dealt with it, so it's okay, and that's part of the work. Um, I created that, that body of work again in Nottingham, um, that was okay. But in comparison to the first um, drawing that I did at Warsaw, um, I was in an enclosed environment. At Nottingham, I was working. Um, the public was around me, walking through. So again, <laughs> I guess I was performing. <laughs> That's a performance. I, 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 was, I created that work. Um, directly with the public whereby you had people coming past or sometimes you had groups of people standing talking to me but it was great because it's acted as a device for people to come up come over and have a conversation and, and then there was a lot that was really stimulating and interesting conversation uh, from the public um, that informs the work and that is critical to development of the work because it informs the work in terms of the feedback and how they perceive the work and what they gain from it because it has many facets. It's talking about drawing, it's talking about young men, it's, talking, it's documenting um, fashion. Um, it's also showing me, it's showing an artist um, at play and I say play because it's like play and work. Um, but it's also always about me being here. It's about visibility and the scale and power. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's still about Solomon and me. It's myself, Solomon and, and I, yeah. It's, I think with that work, I work in series. I don't work in singular. So there is a series going on and I tend to duplicate and I tend to come back that oscillating process, I tend to come back and that's fine because sometimes I, um, I need to come back and, 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 and relate to the work and make connections and say, oh yeah, I understand it now, whereby I probably didn't understand it then. So I often go back and forth and I love that, um, uh, to view it again, I see it again totally differently. So I go in series, I go back and forth for series. Um, and this still is, represents Solomon and myself. But here, instead of looking at the, the, the figure, I'm abstracting, abstracting the idea, the concept. Um, still using the dockets as a, a, as a backdrop, but the juxtaposition and having the text and the, the, the painting together, um, create a, a situation to create another scenario and I guess also I'm looking historically at influence um, still when I'm working I'm always going back through history history and is very important to me is one of my art history or art history and history well, I like the idea of that it's the existence or the stories or something that existed um, um, and the appreciation of it. But 
particular in art history, I, I, um, I think this one I was looking at at the time at vignette techniques. And with this piece, now you're looking at location again, but, and it's done in a very pretty, alluring, subtle way, but it's oil on the docket, on the scan docket, and it represents also area where he was stopped. This is home. This is home. Um, with all its complexities and its tension, it also shows someone who's happy where he or she lives. So I guess it's, it's looking through rose-tinted spectacles. Um, so it has that kind of, there's a lot of duality to the work, I guess, to the work, yeah. I went back in education in my late twenties as a mature student. Obviously, I didn't have the conventional qualifications, so I used various short courses as a stepping stone to get onto the foundation, then subsequently the BA, and... Um, in Berlin. Yeah. I found my BAs and um, my, my years as a student at the time, quite difficult. I felt like a fish out of water. But at the same time, I was excited about the aspects of being a student, or about um, what I thought, what I thought um, my expectation was to be taught or know about art. Um, my, for the six years that I was there, I wasn't necessarily taught the techniques about painting and drawing and other aspects. Um, but I, what I was left with was a visual, a visual, particular visual language and, and recognising what I could do with it. It was very difficult, I find, at time, but at the same time, I really um, loved, enjoyed it. I found it, it was very Eurocentric. Um, perspective, um, there wasn't a lot of encouragement in looking at um, black artists or, or then ethnic minority artists. Um, um, but luckily, through my, um, my interests and my um, wanting to, I found particular artists that I was that kind of inspired my sensibilities. Yeah, I, I looked at the uh, pretty much at the lot of the time at the black art um, uh, movement artists such as Sonia, Eddie Keith, and obviously there was a star which opened up a whole um, <laughs> a whole. Um, flux of other artists, but also not just British. I was looking at a lot of the American artists. Charles White, for example. Um, uh, mainly Charles White at the time. Um, Why Charles White? And also Lorna Simpson. I came across Lorna Simpson through the magazine publication 10.8, which I still have. <laughs> um, uh, I think at the time, t looking at photography again, at the time, um, 10 was was kind of like a Bible to me. And I still have that publication. Uh, it's one of my, my you know, really the last precious... Great, the last special issue, on the, the one about race. Yeah, 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 yeah. Classic. And no one, no one's getting their paws on that. <laughs> no one is getting that paw, their paws on that. The other publication was the other story. Um, but you can imagine a lot through my, my foundation years and my BA, it's like I found a lot of those artists in my foundation. I think how I found, I think I immediately recognised that, yeah, I was going through all these formalities and I was looking at the art, hist art history and looking at all the, um, 
working through this Eurocentric model, but it, may, it, it suddenly occurred to me, well, where is my black contemporaries? And I think my first very first experience or, um, was we had to do a seminar and we had to select a particular artist. And I was immediately drawn to Sonia Boyce and going through the slide, at the time they had a slide library and I went through the slide library and I thought, there's no black artist here. So I, I took it upon myself to find her work, photograph the work, create slides, and that was the basis of my presentation. Um, so from then I already started to catalogue art. art. I catalogue artist work. I have a, 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 a library of artists and curators um, that um, I know of or I'm interested in. Um, and that's still ongoing. So um, and I think that's how I also immerse myself into my practice as well of creating. I have to know who's out there, what, what artists are uh, doing, what, what the conversation. And I try to keep us up to date as, as much as I can, but there is a lot of artists out there. I first um, I first heard that the the turn through um, through Thelma Golding. I I was I've been following Thelma Golding for a while. I first saw a, a photo of her. Was it Art Review magazine? The top fifty key. people, something like that. And I remember flicking through and I thought, wow, a black woman, <laughs> Thelma Golding. I think that was like 2004, something like that, or, or 2007. And then I, I realized that she was doing a talk at Tate. And I remember coming down for it. I mean, at the same time, I was overwhelmed by her, but also being around my contemporaries. <laughs> You know, it was like, sorry, I got a bit overwhelmed seeing, you know, you had Keith over there, Keith Piper, and then you had Chris Philly, and then you had Yinka Shaniberry, and, and I'm thinking, oh, wow, that was at the Tate. Yeah, but also when she coined the phrase um, post-black, um, that's when I first was brought, um, knew about it. I think um, I think I'm a bit um, not clear by the original statements concept of black um, post black. I think how I understand it, it's um, it's a American concept of or artists who. who may not necessarily want to be labelled as black artists, but um, in terms of race and race and uh, race and racism, I guess. I guess what it looks upon in terms of artists and practice who want to um, work outside of those stereotypes or present a different perspective than race and racism. I think there's artists who may resonate with it and feel that it, it defines their practice. Um, but um, I don't necessarily know if I fit into a post-black um, label because it's another label. It's another label and I really try not to attach myself to a label uh, because I just create. The society will label you anyway. And I try not to add towards that, to that. I mean, I mean, I do think there's probably artists who think they want to be written into the the history, um, into that discourse, and they want to 
define, are still trying to define their practice and then feeling that they may not fit into the, what existed. I guess post back is something, a perception is beyond all those stereotypes. Um, that's how I interpret it. I'm still, still a bit unsure about it because I try not to avoid. I recognize it, I think, but I, I guess I'm not post black and <laughs> that's okay. It's very complex because yes and no. From my interpretation, my perspective, um, I think artists should be just, I think people forget that artists should be able to do whatever they like. And I relish in that aspect and that idea. And I like the idea that artists should be, well, for myself, I like the idea that first and foremost, I'm an artist and I shouldn't be labeled. And, but at the same time, at the same time, if it wasn't, example, the black art movement, like you got Frank Bolin and you got the black audio or you got um, Sonia and Keith, them being as black artists, if it wasn't for them, I don't think I would have been here because it made me think, wow, if they can do it, it's, there is hope, you know, so it's in, so in a sense, yes, yeah, I think it is important that you recognise that the issue of race is important. Absolutely. So, it, it's, it's, so it's a complex one. Depends in what context. It also depends in what context and where it's being used. Uh, does global. It relate, does it relate to your work? Yeah. Anyway. My work is global. Anyone can access it. I mean, it's been exhibited in Australia, South Africa, yeah. Um, I think it is, it has that, it fits within that language of globalization. I, and I do think within a, in a, in a broader context, I mean, I'm not just limited to here, England, I don't really have an island mentality. Uh, I think about the world globally in terms of where I, uh, I position myself. And that's another thing, is where you position yourself, the mobility of where this goes. Um, contemporary, oh, the last time I looked at the word, con word contemporary, um, it means now, present. I am in the present, so my work is contemporary. I'm alive, so I'm here. So, yeah, that's how I, I, um, I define contemporary.